Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm doing a brand new series and the series is called Replacement Singers, Who Did It Best? And I wanna hear from you who you think was better, the original singer or the replacement singer. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the bell. I just came over a million subs. I'd like to keep going and get you guys cool fun videos coming your way. Um, and I also have a singing course. In fact, I have a brand spanking new singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else 3.0. You can find it right here at kentamplinvocalacademy.com. It's a new streaming program with a full-blown curriculum and it's really, really cost-effective. So if you're interested in singing, you wanna learn how to sing, you're already an advanced singer, check it out, I promise you. It's golden and it discusses all these amazing places of how these guys got great at singing. So I also wrote out some rules of engagement a little bit because I wanna talk about this. Now, first up to bat is gonna be day David Lee Roth versus Sammy Hagar, okay? And um, I don't want any trash talking or whatever. I really want to get to the core of why, who is who, you know, why they did great and, you know, why they didn't. So one night I was up and I was brainstorming this thing and I, and I came up with a bunch of different titles and I was going to title each one different. Like I was going to go, you know, Hall of Fame or Walk of Shame or I was going to who's boss and who's not or who, who failed and who prevailed, uh, who was beast, who was least. Who did it, who bit it, who nailed it, and who failed it, or who owned it, who cloned it, who rocked it, who mocked it, you know, who slayed, and, or who just got paid, uh, who smashed it, who trashed it, you know, I, so I have like <laughs> literally pages of this stuff, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna say who did it best, because you're gonna find that there's no one or the other, and we're gonna discuss that right now. Let me explain this. So I'm calling this rules of engagement. I'm not gonna do this every time I, I, I engage one of these videos, but I wanted to get started with this because there's some questions that we really need to ask ourselves, um, and, and it's not as black and white as one might think. And you're gonna see with all the different cool artists that I have why I'm saying this, because replacement singers, the first thing is, are, is the replacement singer singing the original music of the original singer? Well, the answer is probably, of course, yes, right? Because that music was written either by the original singer or for the original singer. So it's really hard to step into the shoes of some guy, you know, and especially in this case, David Lee Roth versus Sammy Hagar. Now, they're both extraordinary front men, and I want you to think of something. By the way, there's, there's more than that. Gary Sharon is gonna be in the mix also, but, um, this is really important because when a band comes out, people know them for the thing they come out for, right? And that's what they like about them. And few people want to change that. They really just, if a, even if a new singer comes in, they want to have kind of the same as the old singer, maybe a little better, or just to try to get it as close as they can to continue on with the tradition of the original band. So this is really important because um, to actually step into someone else's shoes fulfill the fan base, you know, the happy, the happy clappies for the original, you know, fans to appease them and please them. And then to take it to another level is extraordinarily difficult. And especially with a front man like David Lee Roth with, at the time was considered one of the greatest front men in the world. Now you can, uh, we're going to talk about his singing. We can argue about who's the better singer in this, that, but it's not just about their singing. So that's the first one is, is, you know, okay was the original music written for the original singer, um, and then the original music, did it suit the voice only of the original singer, and it becomes very difficult for someone like Sammy Hagar to sing a David Lee Roth song. And it kind of really is. He's so unique in the way he presented his art as a singer, etc., as well as his being a frontman. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is did the replacement singer raise the bar of the original singer, okay, the very important, uh, and not just vocally, because like, you know, let's face it, way back in the grunge era, for example, um, there were a lot of replacement singer things going on, and kind of whatever Chris Cornell stepped into, he crushed it, right? I mean, really, uh, and, and maybe not as much as a front man or this or that, or maybe not in the original style or the original singer, and we could all talk about the bands that he was in, but where he kind of went, his voice was so powerful, and he was so good at what he did that he just kind of owned it, right? So there's that part of it of being just an extraordinary talent. So we're gonna get to that in a minute, so that's number two. Number three, who is a better front man or front woman? right? So that's really important. So I tried to pick 
as much as I could good live performances. And another caveat to this is that in the live performance parts, um, it's really important because, or just performances period, that I couldn't get the best footage all the time. So it's not so fair to grade everyone on the one performance they did at one show or maybe they are really drunk off their butt or just had a bad night. Um, so I really did try to be careful about picking the right performances and being fair about this and not being one-sided or you know whatever skewed in some direction. So so who's a better frontman? Um, who sang better live? You know that's very very important. How creative was the replacement singer? Okay, so we're going to talk about all these little issues or big issues as we go through. Uh, who lasted longer? You know, sometimes you have a band that the original singer was only three, four, five years or whatever, the replacement singer comes in, you forget it's already been a decade they've been in the band. That's true for guitar players, drummers, like all kinds of musicians. And they really outlasted the original singer by a factor of a lot. That's very important. Um, who uh, Did the band have any hits with the replacement singer? Um, that either matched or surpassed the original singer. Now that's really important because when we get to this part here, uh, we're gonna see that did happen with Sammy and that's very, very important. So, um, and so longevity and, and hits, you know, did they, did they continue on as a band? Did they morph into something cool? Um, did they take it to another level? Number eight, did the replacement singer contribute a creative uniqueness not just fill the bill, right, but a uniqueness, uh, or just copy the original singer and try to muddle along, you know, to try to keep fans happy. Uh, because most people, like I said, on the replacement singers, they don't want someone brand new. They want to hang on to their memories, their nostalgia, the soundtrack of their life, so to speak. And a new guy coming in is like, no, a new girl coming in is, you know, whatever. So they're not so quick to embrace change. And so that's also very difficult. We kind of talked on the, about that a minute ago. Nine, did the replacement singer come out of nowhere or were they already in an established act? This is, we're gonna find out that this is really important for some of these other bands like Ripper Owens and, and, and whatnot. So I wanna, that's gonna be a very key element to, to this as well. Um, because if someone comes on the scene from a big band, they've already got confidence, they have a fan base, um, you know, they're already professional, you know, doing it where somebody coming out of nowhere is pretty crazy. So that, that's, that's another element. Another component, number 10 is, did they excel at one style or another? Um, you know, ballads versus rock, especially in the grunge era, you know, like how did all that play out? Were they really good at just one thing when they came in or they, did they contribute significantly to um, a bigger pie? Number 11, um, how old were they when they joined? So there, there's youth on the side of the 80s metal bands, guys come in, they're known, known for that. Um, and then an older guy comes in, it's pretty tough to be an older guy, like maybe in Sam's case at this time, in his 40s or whatever, walking in and, 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 and usurping a very difficult spot. How did the replacement singer do before they joined? So in other words, were they newbies or were they in another band? How did they do before they joined? And how did they do after the band dissolved or they left? Did they continue on with their career or was it finished? So was it, you know, the only thing that, that kept them towing it across the finish line was the fact that they joined some successful band, but after that, they're done and they never really did anything beyond that. So I'm gonna touch on a few of these as we go, but, and I'm sorry for the long intro, but I really felt it was important to have like some rules of engagement so we could look at the total, the totality of these, sing the original singer and the replacement singer, starting with David Lee Roth, here we go. Here's Dave, <laughs> all right. I live my life like there's no tomorrow And all I've got I had to steal Least I don't need to beg or borrow Yes, I'm living at a pace that kills Ooh, yeah. Okay, so we know the song well. I chose isolated vocal versions of this right now and I tried to like find the best things I could because some of his stuff wasn't that great. Um, and so I really tried to cherry pick to, to make people at least shine in their element. I'm not looking to like find some horrible thing. Oh, that was terrible, but this guy was great, right? So let's be honest. And I want you guys to be brutally honest, but with respect, okay? I've never really considered David Lee Roth a great singer. I'm not even sure David Lee Roth considers himself a great singer. Now he's a character singer, he's very creative, um, he's, he's definitely got a personality that's extremely, extraordinarily difficult to match, but was that great singing? No, he never, it was never really about that for him. It was about his showmanship, it was about the party of the band, you know, uh, 
you know, grow, growing up in LA myself uh, in the 80s, etc., all a lot of bands were about getting signed, uh, a big party, the chicks, guitar riffs, you know, glam, and, and so forth. And so his whole persona was party day, you know, diamond day, party day. He was extremely athletic, and and and. So let's continue. But but from a vocal standpoint, I wouldn't give him high marks. You know what I mean? Hello. So, Tell you all about it. Now, uh, in fairness, again, and I'm going to be critical, I want you guys to come in and weigh in on this. If I were to play this over again, and I'm not, because I want to, I've got a lot I'd like to play. And he walked in a room, let's say we're all in a party, and he walked in a room, he just kind of sounds like he's sort of, you know, a cool bar singer, fun guy, you know, warming up, you know, to go out to sing. But it doesn't sound like the original recording of Running With The Devil, does it? It is, actually. Um, so you listen and you take, you strip away Eddie's guitar. By the way, I, I, I really like what, um, I think his name is the Professor of Rock, uh, has one of his videos. I haven't really seen much of his stuff, but I did catch a thumbnail of one. And he, did, he said something very prescient. And that was that Van Halen was never about David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar, per se. It was all about Eddie and everyone is missing the point. And I fully agree with him. It was, it was Eddie's guitar playing, his persona, his character. And Eddie was kind of in the shadows to some degree from a personality standpoint, not from his guitar playing, but from a, a personality standpoint. Um, but it was all about what the name means, Van Halen, right? Van Halen Brothers, but Eddie Van Halen. So, so David sort of fronted the band. Yes, he was magical for his, his showmanship and so forth, but it was all about Eddie. So I wanna keep that perspective going of this too, as we're you know debating, is it David was better than Sammy? But so let's continue. So this is a guy that's just kind of walking. In. Hey, yeah, all right. Diamond Dave. <laughs> right? And, and it doesn't matter if it's hot for teacher or any of these songs. That's just his personality, which fit well for the band. Found the simple life. Ain't so simple. When I jumped out on that road, I got no love. No love you'd call real. Ain't got nobody waiting at home. I'm only gonna tell you one time. Ah, yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. I'm running. Ah, yeah. Okay. So I don't even know what he said. I think there's some swear words and expletives in there in the middle, or towards the end. Um, but again, let's be honest, guys. If I played that for you, and let's say you never knew this guy was, and you didn't have, a, weren't wowed by his frontmanship and being in Van Halen, and I played it for you, we'd say, oh my gosh, I gotta go buy this guy's record. No, I don't really think you would. So I'm gonna get some hate, it's okay. I'm not here to, like I said, to favor anybody. I just wanna honestly say who is better. Now, from a frontman standpoint, the guy was untouchable. I mean, he just like, you know, I mean, there's been few guys, I think, probably count them on one hand, that have even come anywhere near his showmanship. But he also did have a, a personality about a party, you know, come with me, we're all going to hell, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, maybe not quite this bad, maybe in this song, yes. But um, party-esque thing. Now, the footage that I got, again, sometimes publishing companies only allow certain footage. So this one, he's kind of drunk off his butt, he is drunk off his butt, but that was also David Lee Roth. That was kind of his thing, right? So I'm gonna play this footage next of this live performance. Check it out. Okay, now, right now, to be honest, I'm kind of bored, and I know he's gonna, you know, pick it up a little bit here and there, and I've seen him 
I think three or four times, I forget. Um, but uh, he's always just really, truly owned it. In this case, he's kind of like walking around, got him in a daze, you know, looking at his watch, Jimmy's crying, what time is it? Now, there's that, okay? And very non-plussing. If I had uh, some of the other footages of some of the other major uh, festivals that they've done, I think you would go, okay, like this next track, these isolated tracks, you'd be going, okay, well, was he as good as I remember? You know what I mean? That's another thing. Was it just as bigger than life thing? Or, and was he really as good as I remember? Yeah, he was really that good. He really was. Yeah, he, he, he owned it. And I'm not gonna deny that, you know, Sammy stepping in was like, whoa, is he gonna be able to pull this off kind of thing? But let's continue, here we go. And nothing gets me down. You got it tough. I've seen the toughest around. And I know, baby, just how you feel. You got to roll with the punches and get to what's real. Okay, now if you notice, he's also got very, very, very limited range. And a lot of people think, because he does that little scream thing that he does and he's got all this range. No, he really doesn't. He sings in less than an octave, really about six notes to be exact. Um, and so even in his writing parts, he's very limited. However, on songs like Might As Well Jump and stuff, these were iconic tunes for them. And to this day in sporting events and whatnot, uh, people still play this stuff because it's that catchy. It's kind of like Queen's We Will Rock You or something. Um, and it really has an incredible staying power. By the way, that's another really important uh, element of this is the staying power because um, you know, you could have bands that have written stuff way back when they were in their sizzle or in their moment, uh, but just really didn't, weren't long lasting. So let's continue, here we go. Go ahead and jump. How, how are you, who said that? Baby, how you been? You say you don't know, you won't know until you begin. Now, a lot of people ask me, hey, Ken, are you gonna do, talk about the technique of their voices? And yes, I'm going to. So um, it's not gonna just be about this guy versus that guy. I wanna discuss, you know, kind of what goes into the singing part, like we said we would do um, from the beginning. So he over you. You don't know, oh, oh, you don't know until you begin. Right, so he's got this really animated kind of sound. Is it no, you know, now he, that would be a guy that was just kind of like, a, you know, kind of throwing down. So we're going to see in a minute um, when we get to Sammy and then um, actually, oh, I don't want to give a spoiler alert, but as we go through this, you're going to notice a very different um, style approach, a lot of strength in the abdomen and, and whatnot. And there's some surprises along the way. So check this out. Check this out. Can't you see me standing here? I got my back against the wrecking machine. Can't you see me standing here? I got my back against a record machine. Right, he's real, yeah, 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 yeah. Really animated in the front of his face, right? I ain't the worst that you've seen. I can't you see what I mean? Okay, so now I want to go forward a little bit. I want to go to this here. Here we go. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanted you to notice how much energy a three-piece band is bringing it, okay? So you get this three-piece band bringing it, and the front man, in this case, is kind of everything, okay? So it's not like you get to hide behind a, you know, 20-piece orchestra or whatever, you know, a lot of players or whatnot. It, everybody has to work for it. 
And I know I probably should have put Gary Sharon after because Sammy came in kind of in the middle. He came after and then there was more Sam after that. But um, I bring it up because I want to juxtapose straight out of David Lee Roth into Gary Sharon because Gary took a lot of crap in that band. And like I said, could you imagine how difficult it would have been to fulfill the shoes of David Lee Roth? Really difficult. And then not just fulfill the shoes of David Lee Roth, David Lee Roth but Sammy coming from Montrose originally, for you, those of you guys that know, a long standing solo career. And I mean, like, you know, I remember way back when the I Can't Drive 55 tour, him inviting bands like Triumph and other bands to perform for him, you know, warm up for him, where he was giving other bands a chance as a solo artist, stepping in from that world into Van Halen. So he already had this gargantuan, long uh, standing uh, career. And then, you know, of course, Gary's in extreme, but this is pretty extreme to take on this role. So I wanted to put him in the middle because I wanted you to see how good Gary really was. He took a lot of crap, guys, but check this out, man. <laughs> Okay, now, again, if we had them both in a room, I get it, David participated in the songwriting, so he didn't do that, so we can't give him the credit for that. But from a performance standpoint, moving around, being spot on vocally so far, and we're gonna get to some more stuff here in a minute, I think Gary did a pretty stinking good job, man. And I don't know like if, if Sammy hadn't been in the middle of that mix, and then he kind of went on to be with Van Halen, they might have turned out some cool stuff. I don't know. I know they did some some stuff that was, yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't hit the, the, the anywhere near the marks that Sammy did when he came in because they had way more number one singles and success from a radio standpoint and, a, and a just, yeah, just a radio uh, sales, record sales standpoint uh, than even, even David Lee Roth. But keep an eye on this guy, man. Check this out. <laughs> Good man, let's continue. guys come on weigh in on this come on and you know hit me up here let's talk he comes in he does David Lee Roth I don't think Sammy did David that great I think Sammy did Sammy great but I don't think Sammy did David that great David never did Sammy ever <laughs> and he couldn't um, because of the range and the power and just the phrasing and just stuff they're very different personalities okay so David never did Sammy Sammy kind of did some David but not really sort of you know and it, and it was kind of uncomfortable it was just kind of like pounding a square peg into a round hole or something you know right um, and so you got Gary who had two of the greatest singer frontmen of all time stepping in and he's doing both right and he's trying to appease, you know, please the, 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 the David Lee Roth fans. He's trying to please the Sammy fans. He's hitting the notes. He's running around. He's got a lot of energy. You can tell he's not wasted off his butt. 
doing a pretty stinking good job, guys. And, and again, he's no Sammy. I'm sorry. Don't don't get mad at me for saying that. Um, you know, which is fine, but he does his thing cool too, right? Everyone has their element and their 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 identity, personality. So, um, yeah. They got Michael Anthony stepping in. I don't know if he couldn't sing all of the parts of Sam because the stuff Sam sings is really hard. You got Eddie that's going to come in and join in, in a minute um, and giving him a little vocal break. Or if it's just kind of more an intrigue and an interest where other band members are also singing the Sammy stuff. Or maybe they're just trying to say, look, anyone can sing Sammy Hagar. You got everybody. I don't know. There was a lot of tension going on around this time. So anyway, it's not true, by the way. Okay, what do you think, guys? You think he did a good job? I think he did a killer job. Oh my gosh, listen now, he was spot on the whole time. I didn't hear any missed notes. He hit all Sam's notes. He's running around like a crazy man on stage. He's, you know, got good energy. Pretty good stuff. Very relaxed. Let's check this out again. Let's listen to this again. Sam there. There's that. Oh, sorry, hold on. Let me get to the to the next section here. All right, guys, you got to admit, and I don't care what you say, you got to admit, Gary Schroen kicked Major Bud. Let's be honest. He was put in a very. It reminds me kind of when when Karabi took over Vince Neil's place and they kind of did some grungy kind of thing. You know, Karabi. We're going to talk about him too later, but killer vocalist and did not get the chance he should have gotten. And we're going to talk about that with a few other artists. I'm gonna tell you, man, I think he Schroen did a, a killer job. However, with all that said, yes, you guys know Sam and I are cousins, blah, blah, blah. That's okay, that's out of the way. I'm not saying this because Sam's my cousin. I'm saying this because of this. Check this out.
Now, the energy, what was our criteria? Let's read this again, okay? Here we go. I know this is a longer video, guys. Some of you guys are gonna hang, some of you guys are already clicked off. Are they singing music that was written for themselves? This was written for Sam. Did they raise the bar? I would say Gary Sharon raised the bar vocally, maybe not as a performer, but vocally. Maybe not so much as David Lee Roth, Annex and Craziness, but he had a class to him that was really cool. Who was a better front man? Well, Sam, and the minute this went on, the minute this went, second this went on, the bar went, I mean, just huge. I remember seeing Sam at a live show, and I like Mona, the bass player. She's really sweet. Um, but I remember when Michael Anthony, I, I saw Sam play um, in California, and he invited Michael to come up and play bass on a couple tunes. One player, same rig, other than his bass, but same volume, everything. It wasn't like someone turned up the volume. When he walked out, the whole energy of the whole place just went, <laughs> I kid you not. And I, 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 as much as Mona's cool, I'm not trying to bash any players or anything, then when he walked off the stage and she came back out to play, right? The it, true story. And again, I'm just being really candid and really honest. So when this came on, check it out. Look at this, man. I mean, let's you know you can you can go from let's go all the way back here, and let's go to the, the live performance here. Where, in fact, I'm going to go to uh, I don't want to call him Drunk Dave, but <laughs> the Drunk Dave performance. Check it out. So there's that. Then we've got this. Right? And then we go straight from that to this. It's like a train coming down the track. It's heading your way and you ain't stopping the train. The train's gonna roll you right over. Um, and his voice is bigger. And he has a consummate professionalism about him that's really, really seasoned. And you can really tell us, I'm gonna play some more right now, but so we're looking for the, and by the way, two, one more thing. This is really important. I've been, I have 40 records out, four zero, a lot of records. I've toured the world a lot. When good players are in a band, or when a good player comes into the band, it raises the bar of the band. It also raises the energy of the band, and it forces everybody else, or excites everyone else to play better. True story, any of you guys been in bands, you know what I'm talking about. So the minute Sam gets in there, he raised the bar at every level, performance, showmanship, vocally, bigness of sound, class act, Control, not frenetic, you know, just running up and down the stage, you know, Ozzy kind of just going nervously back and forth like this. No, he literally just raised the entire bar of the band. Let's continue. One more thing, so we talked about technique, right? So you got Gary Sharon, no, 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 right? He's got a, kind of a smaller sound, very compressed in the throat. David Lee Robb, yeah, no, no, down home, right? And Sam's, yeah, ah, ah. you could hear the lion roaring in his chest cavity when he's coming in. And all of these notes that he's singing, it's very, very easy for him to sing, where you heard David Lee Rock kind of struggle with six or seven notes in his range. Gary Sharon did a pretty good job, you know, as far as the smoothness and his control and his ability and his technical ability. But Sam is just a consummate seasoned professional who's been doing this a very long time and very comfortable in his element. Really 
wanted some of that. tell he's just having a good time he's relaxed i get the feeling no offense to the van halen friends fan fans out there sammy's gonna have a good time with or without you and you might as well have a good time too and he's not i mean yeah he wants to please you and make you happy and stuff but sam's gonna go waitress bring me some tequila you know he, he's he, he brings the party with him he is the party actually right and kind of like David Lee Roth was and pr probably the reason that they brought him in is guy who in the world could possibly fit this bill I don't know if you guys remember um what's her name uh the girl I think it was uh, Katrina in the waves or I, I forget you guys can correct me but they had originally looked at it no it's Patty Smythe that's right it was Patty Smythe they were originally going to bring in as the, as the vocalist before Sam and I think she would have gotten eaten alive to be honest, for this kind of crowd and this kind of energy, no one can, I mean, it's just a train coming down the tracks. You pray that it's not a light headed your way, gonna run you right over. No missed notes. One more thing too, I like pointing this out too. The band is huge. Three piece band carrying all that energy. A lot of it's the driving bass too, especially digga 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 digga, you know, the whole time. And Eddie's guitar. But his vocals are so big, they're as big as the band. Straight up, like, like it's not like some guy in come, hi y'all, doing out there, I want shucks, I want to sing a song for you. And it's like, no, I don't care anything. <laughs> you know, it's just, I'm gonna dominate this and I'm gonna own this. And that's precisely what's going on because of his confidence and his voice and the bigness and the energy. Whoa. Now, the reason I chose this is you, the, it's one thing to have this motorhead, they're not motorhead, but, and I've seen motorhead a few times, that's why I'm bringing it up, where it's this nonstop face peeling energy coming at you the whole time. It's another thing to maintain that same kind of dominant energy, but not frenetically from just duck -a -duck -a -duck -a -duck -a coming at you and being able to bring it into like a ballad kind of thing, but still having that same kind of command of energy. Check it out. Cabo Wabo and Sammy's coming out and the band's there and you're like in his living room and you're just having a good time and it's so live it's just it doesn't feel processed or fake or tracks or it's just it's just a party live it's just having a good time and just everyone's in it you know Put this on here so you could juxtapose Sammy when he did try to do a David Lee Roth tune. Eh, he did it like Sam, right? Check it out. David could. No! David's never gonna do that, right? So Sam goes, <laughs> I'm gonna add a little Sammy to this, right? So as he's going through, he's appeasing the David Lee Roth fans and he still gets to be Sammy Hagar, right?
right? He's adding a little more melodic-y kind of things, kind of like he would do. He's really great at improvising. So, you know, he's just kind of improvising. He's not singing the same thing over and over again. That's really cool. <laughs> I want to hear from you. Tell me who you think, who is better, who did it best, okay? Top, top, put it in you know, the comment sections, tell me why. Um, and be really fair, be respectful, let's consider all these elements, all, everything that goes into all this stuff, not just one element. You can talk about an element, that's great, he was a better friend, man, he was, uh, was never about that, whatever. I want to hear from you, but fill me in and let me know your thoughts on this, and I'm going to have a really good time with this series coming out, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts and comments. So, hope you enjoyed this game, and definitely check out my next video.